The math sorcerer knows real magic. Hey, what's up YouTube? In this problem we have an infinite series and we're going to find the radius of convergence. I love infinite series. To do that, we're going to use the ratio test to help us find the interval of convergence. Once we have the interval, uh, we can draw a little picture and figure out the radius. Now even I'm interested. What is he going to do next? Recall the ratio test says if you take the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of a sub n plus 1 over a sub n, and you get L, uh, if it's less than 1, we have convergence. If it's bigger than 1, we have divergence, and if it's equal to 1, we have no info. We're going to use the ratio test on this, and then set everything less than 1, and then solve for x to see if we can figure out part of the interval, and then from there find the radius. So let's do it. Let's start by using the ratio test. We have the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value. And it's important to keep the absolute values because we don't know what x is, right? x is a, is a real number here, so it could be negative. So first we have to work out a sub n plus 1. That basically means we replace all of the n's with n plus 1's. So we'll have n plus 1 factorial to the k. So we have n plus 1 factorial to the k. Over. Then here we have k, and then n plus 1, and then parentheses, parentheses, factorial. Right? And then the x to the n, I'm going to write it up here. It's x to the n plus 1. Right? You can think of this, you can think of this sum as infinite sum, n to 0 to infinity, n factorial to the k, x to the n over k n factorial, right? That's how you want to think about it for, for the ratio test, right? So all we did was we replaced all of the n's with, with n plus 1's, good stuff. Now we have to divide by a sub n. So basically, we have to divide by this. This whole thing here is our a sub n. And so when you divide by something in mathematics, you multiply by the reciprocal. So we're basically going to flip this. So times, parentheses, k n factorial over, and then here we have n factorial to the k times x to the n. Absolute value, right? Absolute value. Yes, yes, that looks good. Let me just check that. So we replace all of the n's with n plus 1. Boom, boom, boom. And we just took this and flipped it. Boom. Okay, so what simplifies? Looks like the x's will cancel, the x to the n's, right? If you have x to the n plus 1 over x to the n, you can write that as x to the n times x over x to the n. And they cancel and you just get x, right? So that's going to go away. So we have a limit. n goes to infinity. What else can we do? Here we have n plus 1 factorial to the k. Here we have n factorial to the k. We can write those together as n plus 1 factorial over n factorial, and it's all to the k. So that's this and this. We've taken care of these. We've taken care of these. So we have x. And then we have k n factorial. I'll leave that there for now. We'll figure out what to do there, I hope. <laughs> and then here we can distribute the k. k n plus k. k n plus k. So we have k n plus k factorial. All right, what else can we do? We can simplify these, right? n plus 1 factorial over n factorial is n plus 1. Why? Because n factorial is n, n minus 1, dot, 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 3, 2, 1. n plus 1 factorial is n plus 1, and then you subtract 1. n plus 1 minus 1 is n, then the next one would be n minus 1, and so on. So it's really n plus 1, but all of this is n factorial, right? So n plus 1 factorial is n plus 1 n factorial. So basically, this is n plus 1 n factorial. So these cancel. You're left with just, um, so if I'll write it here. You have n plus 1 factorial over n factorial. Just so you see it, it's n plus 1 n factorial over n factorial. Boom, you're just left with n plus 1. So this is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of n plus 1, who well, let's not forget the k, so we still have the k there, times x. And then here we have k n factorial over k n plus k factorial. And I think, my friends, this is where we are going to have to think and see if we can figure it out. So I'm going to erase this, and up to here I think it's probably good. So let's, uh, let's see what's going on here. So the x, there's no problem with the x. x is independent of n, so no issues there. We have this n plus 1 to the k. And then we have this k in factorial and this here. So we, this is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity. So let's leave this stuff alone. Okay, so we have, um, I'll put the x here. So x, uh, n plus 1 to the k. And I'll leave the k in factorial here, k in factorial. And let's work with this beast here, this monstrosity. So k n plus k factorial, what is that? 
Well, it's a beast. <laughs> Um, so it's km plus k, and then the next term would be km plus k minus 1, then km plus k minus 2, and so on. So let's write that down. Let's write, down, let's write it down. km plus k, the one before that is km plus k minus 1, the one before that is km plus k minus 2, and then dot, dot, dot. So eventually, eventually, so we have k minus 1, k minus 2, k minus 3, k minus 4, k minus 5, k minus 6. Eventually, you're going to get k minus k. k minus k is 0, so you'll end up with just kn factorial. Right, or just kn rather, right? Eventually you'll get k minus k, okay? k minus k is zero, so you'll just get kn. The term after kn is kn minus one, kn minus two, k, so kn factorial. Again, eventually, let me write that down. Eventually, you have kn minus one, kn minus two. Eventually, you're gonna get to kn minus k. So you're just gonna get kn plus kn minus k, if you keep subtracting, right? That's kn. Then the one after that would be kn minus 1. Then after that is kn minus 2. So basically, eventually, you're going to get to kn factorial. So kn factorial. Right? That's the idea. That's the idea. And then look, these cancel. And now we really have to think, right? We really, really have to think. I think we can take the limit now. Here we have m plus 1 to the k, right? So we're going to have the x. That's not, that's not going to be a problem, right? This limit should exist. So here, the leading coefficient is x n to the k, or just I'll just put the x n to the k. We can pull the x out if we want, and just deal with that there. And then we have to figure out how what, what we get when we multiply all of this out, right? So we have k, k minus 1, k minus 2. We subtracted all integers. We subtracted integers enough times to get rid of the k. So if k was 3, you have to subtract 3. If k is 10, you have to subtract 10. If k is k, you subtract k. So we have k copies here. So we have k copies. K copies, right? We have k factors here, right? So this the leading coefficient here is going to be k times k times k. So we have k copies. So k times k. So that's going to be k to the k, right? It's going to be k to the k. This is times. So it's going to be 1 over k to the k. Right? 1 over k to the k. Let me explain that again. So the leading coefficient here is n to the k. The leading coefficient down here, okay, is going to be kn. So you have kn, 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 and there's k of these, okay? There's k of these. That's going to be kn to the k, which is k to the k, n to the k. Again, you have kn, 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 and there's k of them. So you get kn to the k, right? Because you add the exponents, right? 1 plus 1 plus 1, k times. So you get k n to the k, which is k to the k, n to the k, right? So it's 1 n to the k over k to the k n to the k. That's the ratio of leading coefficients, so it's 1 over k to the k. You want this to converge, so you set it less than 1, right? So pros do. Then you solve for x, so you multiply by the reciprocal. So you get the absolute value of x less than k to the k, right? So you have an interval that's from k to the k to negative k to the k. This is a power series centered at 0. You say, whoa, how do you know that? How do you know it's centered at 0? Because, right, because it has the form blah times x minus 0 to the n, where blah is independent of x. There's no x's here. It's just some stuff with n's, right, in k's, uh, but there's no x's, so it's x minus 0 to the n. So the center is 0. So if you were to draw a picture here, here's 0, here's k to the k. I don't know if it's going to converge or diverge. Let's not, let's not think about it. <laughs> it was hard enough to find the radius, right? And then here, you see that r is equal to k to the k. So the radius that converges in this problem is k to the k. And again, the key step here was this last step. Let me explain it one more time, one more time. So again, we have uh, n plus 1 to the k. So the leading term is n to the k. Here, we wrote down kn plus k. We just kept subtracting numbers. At some point, you get k minus k. Then you get kn, right? Because when you get k, when you get k minus k, what happens is you get kn plus k minus k. So you just get kn. The one before, the one after that is kn minus 1. K minus, so the rest of it is kn factorial. So those cancel. Here you have k copies, right? Because you had k and you got rid of it. So you have to subtract a number k times. You subtract, so there's k copies here. So you get k and k and k and k and k and k times, right? So there's ones here, so you just get k into the k, right? You add all the ones, that's k to the k, n to the k. So on the bottom, the leading coefficient is k to the k, n to the k. Up top, it's n to the k, so it's 1 over k to the k. 1 over k to the k. That's the limit. You set it less than 1. You multiply by k to the k, you get here. And then um, you draw a picture, and then r is k to the k. That's it. Pretty tough problem. I hope this has helped someone out there in the world. That's it.